Welcome to another Natron tutorial. In this video, we're going to be looking more and working deeper with SVG and vector graphics. If you watched the last video, we did a little cartoon animation uh, using an, a single SVG file and animating separate elements of that SVG. If you're not familiar with vector graphics, this might be a little bit over your head, so you might want to get some experience. First watch some Inkscape tutorials or get more familiar. Definitely watch the last video and some of the other Natron tutorials that I've done because we're going to be going through this rather quickly. So I want to create a, uh, we're going to create a user interface animation for a, like a phone app. We could just draw the whole thing in Inkscape, but in the interest of time, and in case you want to follow along, we, we're just going to go to Pixabay and we're going to find a user interface vector graphic. So if we just go to vector graphics and search UI, we can find, there's this one right here that I really like. This is by Jeremin, user Jeremin. It's a uh, free for commercial use, Creative Commons zero, no attribution required. We can download this, but make sure when you download that you don't download the PNG image. Check here to download the vector graphic. That's going to let us control and have uh, be able to animate individual elements as opposed to just one big picture. So go ahead and click download, and we'll save that, and then go back, and we're also going to search for another vector graphic, and we're just going to search phone. And we're going to find uh, this one right here by Deep Tuts. And we're going to download this one as well. And again, do the vector uh, graphic. Now this one you're going to see is actually an Adobe Illustrator file. .ai is the extension, which is fine because Inkscape is amazing and it can open all that. And Inkscape is what I'm going to be using. So if you don't have Inkscape, um, you can download that. So I'm just going to open it. Well, let's find the files first of all. So the files I downloaded we can see the mobile phone file, we cannot open. It's a .ai, and if we just click open, Windows is, is going to be like, hey, we don't know what to open this with because I don't have Illustrator installed. But the other one is an SVG, which can be opened in Illustrator or Inkscape or any other SVG program. And we can see if we hit the plus key when we open it in Inkscape, we can see what it looks like. And so we're just going to click here, and we'll see it's all one big stuck-together image right now. So if we click on it and hit Control shift g we can actually ungroup and we see a lot more line, selection lines appear. And now if we click this background and move it, it'll move independently of all the other elements and everything's a whole complete separate thing, which is cool. So we're going to select all this, hit the delete key, select the background, hit the delete key, because all I'm wanting to do is choose one screen really. I don't even want this pink background. Hit the plus key to zoom in a little bit. Delete that pink background. Perfect. So now we just have this uh, single screen shot of like a, a user interface screen of maybe some uh, ratings, user reviews, that kind of thing. So this is what we're going to bring into Natron to animate. And I want to overlay it over top of that other uh, phone screen. But first of all, let's just let's look at the size of this. So in pixels, this is about uh, this is 221 by 406. So we're we're going to um, we'll say 222 by 407. Let's go to our document properties and let's change it to match this. So 222 and 406. So where do our document properties go? Document properties. Oh, it's over here. So uh, we want the document to be in pixels. The width will do uh, 222, and the height will do 407. So you see what I'm doing is, otherwise when we, 407, oh yeah, that's good. Otherwise when we bring this in, it's just going to look a little bit, it's going to be kind of, we just want it to be a nice size, manageable size to work with. So great, we have this. Uh, we have all these different elements, and then we need to choose the elements that we want to animate. So I'm thinking, let's just left click and select all of this here, and hit Control G. So let's just group just an element like this, and maybe we can animate it like sliding in from the side or coming up from the bottom. So that'd be a nice animation. So I'm going to group Control G. I'm just going to group all these different elements together. Control G. So now we have three separate elements that we can control. And then everything else is going to be just one big group. So I'll drag all these off for now. And we'll select all of this and go Control G. And that's actually one group. And really what I want to do, if we go to Layers, 
and we go bring up our layers, we see there's actually the, the, the program that made this just didn't put any layers at all. It just put everything in one layer and then just kind of had it all be, there's different levels on top of each other, but there's not really a specific layer we can see here on the top right. So if we click add layer and we'll call this um, background underscore screen and click add. So this will be our background screen layer. So if I copy this, if I select this and go X, control X to cut it, and then we get on this layer and go control V. So now I think I've pasted that into that layer. And then we can add another layer and we'll call this one um, user one, we'll add it. And then, uh, then on this user one layer, we'll, cut, we'll grab this, go control X. So we'll cut it out of the nothingness layer it was in and we'll paste it. Oops, while this is selected, we'll hit control V and we'll paste it here. And then we'll do the same thing with this one. So let's add another layer and we'll call this user two. And there's a lot of different ways you can do this. So we can accomplish the same thing without doing this process that I'm doing now, but it's gonna help us a lot. Control X, select two, control V. So I'm just moving these comments to their own layers. And we'll call this one user three. Hey, cool, it automatically knew what I wanted to do. Select it, control X, select control, level, uh, control V. So now we can kind of just tell what we've done here. And if you're a little confused, it'll make sense once we get into Natron. And if you didn't watch the last video, you'll be even more confused because I, what I'm trying to do is avoid having like a hundred different elements that I'm gonna be animating over top of this. So let's see if this worked. So if we click the show button, we can see if we disable these layers, we can see which ones they are on. So perfect, everything's on the correct layer that it needs to be. And so now we're gonna we're just gonna save the whole thing as an SVG file. So I'm gonna click file and we'll hit save. So now it's the same file we downloaded, we just saved just this portion of it without all the, uh, the background other information. So now we need to, let's, let's open up Natron and let's bring that into Natron and see how it looks first of all. So if we go file and we go uh, read, we can read in this user interface file and see what it looks like. So we've got this user interface and over here under the read section, we actually don't have any options that we can read in certain parts of it. So we need to bring in a like a merge node can do it, for example. So if we hit the M key on the keyboard and bring in a merge node, and now under the merge options, it says everything connected to the pipe A, of what do you want to display on that? So we go to the A layer and we say, all right, now we've got all these different things. And this is what I was talking about. We have all these different paths we can view just like this circle, for example. But we want to do the, the groups that we created, which I, for, I should have named them when I was in there. But um, this is one, for example, this G, 2042 is our background. So that's really good. That's what we're gonna to want to connect our B pipe to right now. And so we'll go, oops, we'll go to the B pipe and change it to the, we'll change it to right there, perfect. And then now on our A pipe, we can just hit, select this again and we can go control copy, control paste, and we can have our, uh, connect our A pipe to it. So I'm gonna hit the D key on this background node since they're the same. And we're going to, instead of having the A layer show this group, we're gonna show it this group below. This is just the four stars, five stars. If I go back to Inkscape and collect on, select this and go right click and go to Object Properties, we can see the name of this. Uh, oh, you know what? I put it on its own layer, so we don't need to do this. But the name of this group is G1926. So we could select G1926. Uh, we'll go to A and we go down to find G1926. There it is. And so now we can see that user rating in there. But another way to do it, because since we did levels, we can actually just find our level layers. We can find that layer. So we've got layer one is the background. And then our layer two is going to be one of those other ones. So we go to layer two and we find layer two. And that's the reason I set them up as layers because it's kind of easier to find then looking at groups and paths and different things, layer three is gonna be a different review and layer four, et cetera. So let's, do, let's grab each of these in. Let's go to layer two. And I'm gonna go control C, control V and do it again, control C, control V. So we get three copies of, of reading this in and we'll just get, 
do an A2 pipe and an A3 pipe because you can have you can have multiple things going to a merge. So right now we've got four things going into this merge right here. And we want this one. So the A2, we want to be layer three. So we scroll down to find layer three. And then for the fourth one, we want to be layer four. Oops, and it's under the merge node. So this A3, we want to be layer uh, three, right? Okay, so awesome. No, layer four, sorry. Scroll down to layer four, keep scrolling, layer four. So you see all these different elements. There's so many elements. Um, it can be kind of confusing at first, but now we have the whole thing. So now let's see what this looks like. So if we zoom in here, we can see uh, if we hit the select any certain node and hit the D key, we can disable and see what each of those is seeing. And we can rename these two if we wanted to, we could call it we can rename the read instead of calling read one two three. We can call it right user three um, or whatever we want to call it. We can rename them. Now what I want to do is animate these in. So let's let's do this. Let's apply a transform node to each of these by hitting the T key when they're selected. Now they each have a transform node. So what we want to do is at very first we want to have no reviews and then have them animate in uh, very quickly. So to do that, and they're just going to kind of slide in. So we go to this transform one, and we go, let's move this first one. Let's just move it down here off screen completely. In fact, let's move them all off screen. So we'll move them there. I'll put the second one over here. It's giving us some error messages, but that's okay for now. And then we come back to this first one, and we want to animate it in. So we go to our translate on transform one, right click, and go set keyframe. And we'll come into frame, we'll come in 10 frames later, and we'll have it be animated all the way up to here. So it'll come in just like that. Uh, it's looking a little bit grainy, but it won't look like that when we actually do it. And then we go to this, uh, this next transform, and we'll keyframe it. And we want to make sure that we bring it over a little bit here. And let's go right click, set keyframe all. And then we'll have it animate in just like that. We'll zoom in, make sure it's looking good. It is. And then we'll come to our third transform. First, we'll move it into place so that it comes directly straight up. Then we right click, set keyframe all, and it will do the same thing. Oh, 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 oh. For this one, we want to set the, well, this one's going to be 30 to 40. Let's go back. I, f I didn't do the, this one in the right place. They're going to come in the same time. So we'll do this third one since we're already here. So we'll set the keyframe. We'll do this from, from uh, 40 to 50. So we come over to, let's undo this, remove my keyframe. I'm gonna go to 40 and then start the animation there. So set keyframe all dimensions, and then this one will come up at that point. Ooh, no, let's put it down there and then we go to 50, I'm sorry. And then we'll do this. So I'm just trying to get them to, to come in at the correct place. And I should have put the thing over top. That's why I kind of got messed up a little bit. Let's see what this looks like though. So they're gonna come in different times. So this second one's the one that I wanna change. So let's um, remove all the animation from it. That center's just thrown me off. So I'm just gonna, re I'm gonna redo the center of this one just so that I know which one is which. So this one's right here. And then we'll come over to 20 and we'll go set keyframe, all dimensions. We'll start it down here at 20, and by 30, we'll have it be back up again. And it was like two about right there. Now this should we should see all three of these animated. One, two, three. So it's a little bit messy. What does my transform say? Render uh, rectangle contains some nan values. They will be converted to one. Okay, that's fine because it, everything looks like it's fine. So that's our animation. We have these different profiles animating in. Now we could just render this out. We could throw it on throw it on a background. So we can get another merge node. So if we take this merge node and put it into another merge node, we could do like a um, let's do let's grab like the shader toy. Go to filters. Go to shader toy, and then under this uh, shader toy, we'll put it as the background. It's kind of hard to see what's going on there, but so I'm getting this as the background, and then we're going to pipe this over into the viewer. And now we'll have a background here. We'll go to our project settings 
and we'll change them to our total thing will be 1920 by 1080 for our for our total project. Um, yeah. So now we're seeing this here, and so now and then we can transform this whole thing, this entire thing, and just move it. Uh, which one is it? That's just the the problem with this. So let's under this transform, we'll find which one it is. So it's this one right here. We'll move it over. All those see all those transform c controls are over top of each other. So I didn't know I didn't want to move the wrong one. So oops, Control Z. This is what I want to move. So we'll do that, and we can like scale it up larger too. Uh, and then we will uh, change the shader toy, which is here. Click this triangle, go to load from preset, and we are going to do a source. There's one I found that I liked, uh, this animation watery. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. So now we have this animation happening along with our everything else being animated in. So that's kind of neat. And then as a final thing, what we want to do, just to get really crazy, we're going to bring in that other image. Well, you know what? I'm going to end this video here, and in the next video, we're going to be we're going to do the corner pin. We're going to bring in that phone, which is at an angle. Remember that phone that we downloaded here? We're going to bring this in, and we're going to uh, change our thing in Natron so it's not flat looking directly on us, but it's going to be mapped to this phone, which is a still image, but it's kind of the precursor to like tracking and mapping a screen on top of a, a, an artificial screen. This has kind of been another long video, so hopefully you found it informative. Um, if, it, if it was a little bit over your head, check out some of the earlier videos um, because everything that I've went over quickly, I've talked about in detail uh, in past tutorials. So appreciate you watching. Catch you on the next video. Have a nice day.